Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon. So be sure to text READY TO BUY, that's READY TO BUY, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software $100 and starting pricing for high-end software $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal's buyer's protection guarantee. Now, shout out to my man, David Ford. I see you got your David Fords on. Hold, hold Absolutely. Let me, let me show the I rock people. With Ford. I, don't, I usually don't rock shades, you know, when I'm uh, on the show. But I just want y'all to see the, you know, the Panther Elites. We rocking, rocking the Panther Elites right here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, right. black, uh, <laughs> black Ford, owned man. designer, you know, that we both mutually uh, rock with. Mm -hmm. And I see you rocking your David Fords. Yeah. Very royal. I got a lot of Fords, man. I got a lot. I got about maybe, I don't know, a lot of, you said I got a lot of joints. That's what's up. Yeah, I got I got a few pair. I got I got more on the way as well. Yeah. Shout out my man, David Ford. Yeah. Um, your daughter, Vina Love. Mm -hmm. Um. Singer. Yes. Yeah. What singer, rapper. Uh, yeah. growing up hip hop, mm -hmm. I remember you hit me up a while back and you wanted to see if uh, maybe you can get her an interview with uh, Homeboy, yeah, yeah. with V Lad, and he, and he acted like a uh, basically acted like an ass, yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, here's what my problem was with that. Um, when Vlad first was getting on, you know, you know how humble people be. Then he asked me to come and do, when I did do Vlad television, the first, the only one and only time I did it, I was appreciative of that, but he wasn't asking me nothing about my career. He's talking to me about Kanye West. He's talking to me about DJ Paul D and he's not telling me, he's not talking about me and what I did, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? Um. But then my daughter comes out. And you know, I remember one time before that, before my daughter came out, one time I had called him and said I wanted to do something. And he said he don't interview DJs. I said, you don't interview DJs. Your name is DJ Vlad. What do you mean you don't interview with DJs? And this is the problem I've been having with the DJ thing, trying to get them to be looked at as an artist. It'd be those type of comments that bring the DJ down. Like, what do you mean? Like, are they the bottom of the total pole or something? Like, they don't matter. Like, what do you mean on interview DJ? Right, what you're does that fucking bullshit. mean? You're you interview, interview bullshit. hip hop artists. Right, but and your name is DJ Vlad on top of that. Right. Right, okay, so then, all right, we got past that. All right, cool. Then my daughter comes out, and that's when I reached out to you and said, yo, I wanted to, you know, you know see if we could do a little something to, like, get her promoted, whatever. And I brought and it you to called, him. And you told me that he said, we don't do that. That's what he said, we don't do that. That's what he told you. Now, that got me pissed off. But what really got me pissed off. And I wanted you to know that, but hey, I ain't got nothing to do to, with no, this. No, I got just You had nothing to do with it. message. Know. Like, you know what I mean? But that got me really, really pissed off, right? To the point where I started feeling like he was a culture vulture because what happened was when little Boosie brought some little white dude up there, little white kid, it was cool. Mm. Little Boosie was sitting there with the little white kid. Nobody knew who this little kid was. We still don't know who he is today. Mm. Shot the little Boosie, but this is what happened. I'm watching him do that. Right. He kicked the pre calls to have his daughter come up there, a real singer. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like I'm trying to sell her because she's my daughter. She's a real talent. And you're going to disrespect me like that? You know what I'm saying? So that's why I felt the way I felt. You know, and um, and here's my thing is that. I take things personal because when you call kid, I'm there. You're going to get one of two things. Yes, no. You ain't going to get the middle shit. You're going to get yes or no. So when somebody in the industry do something like that, I take it very personal. 
no doubt. Um, but I appreciate what he does. You know, that's that's his site. Do what he do. You know what I'm saying? I think people go up there and talk a little bit too much about you know their own personal shit. You know, but that's that's what he does, and you know he's successful at it. You know. Yeah, we don't appreciate what he does no more. We don't fuck with him. Mm -hmm. Um. So how how did your daughter get into the uh? What is that? Growing up hip hop and all that. When they asked me about it. Because I didn't want to do it. Right? Mm. I thought that it was going to be exactly, I thought it was going to be um, something that Exploitive. I wanted to do. So when we decided to do it, I made some things clear that I wanted done. They were doing the show, you know, we in the show, my, you know, my daughter's out, we all out. So of course, they wanted us in the show because of the, of the relationship and what we're doing. But I didn't want my daughter to look in a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be, and I know what I was worried about me. I just didn't want her looking a certain way. So they agreed to what I said, you know. And then when the show actually happened, it things was done that I said I didn't want done. Mm. And that's what made me not come for the next season and her come for the next season. Mm. And you know, with TV, what it is is that when I told my daughter Vina Love, I said, they're only going to use what you give them. They're going to maneuver. They're going to manipulate what you give them. They, they got a camera in your face. So whatever you say or whatever you do, they can take that and move it the way they want to move it. Well, what did first, they do that you didn't like? First episode. Very first episode. They had, she went to a sex shop to get this leather suit that you could only get in a sex shop. You can't get it in a regular store. They mm. made it look like she was in the sex shop just to be in the sex shop. Mm. You follow what I'm saying? So that's why I said they only gonna they only could feed off of what you give them. So they could take something, manipulate it, and make it look like it's something different. You see what I'm saying? So when I seen that, and I seen the part where they almost had in a little fight and all that shit, that's when we pulled out. I was like, you know, we this ain't for us. Mm. You know, shout to love and hip hop and everybody, but I didn't want to be in that type of situation. When love and hip hop asked me to come on there, I said, I'll come on there for an episode, but I'm not speaking. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say nothing. And that's what I did. I went up there, I backed Precious Paris up on the turntables, and I ain't say nothing. Mm. You know, but um, shout to Love and Hip Hop, shout to, you know, um, Growing Up Hip Hop, both gigantic shows. But I just I just felt like with how I carry myself and how I wanted my daughter portrayed, I didn't want to hear no dumb shit. Great shows to be on if it's going to go the according way that we wanted it to go. You know, but other than that, we don't need, I don't need that. Okay, definitely feel that, you know, I'm, that whole reality TV shit is some real bullshit. Um, but you do have your daughter on the album mm -hmm. on a song called Uptown. Yep. Beat sounds like a, a remake of one of those. Stuff. Dun, dun, mm, 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 mm. But That's it's not. What you did. It sounds like you was influenced by that beat, no? No, the 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 well, I, yeah, of course I was influenced, but that the the beat that I used, well, first of all, the beat that I used, I played over, but the original beat of that came out in the same time as the Cat Stevens Dog of Donut came out. Uh -huh. They did the same drum pattern as Dog of Donut, but it's from Germany. Uh -huh. The sample I used is from Germany, and Cat Stevens is from from I think he's from. Over the overseas, if I'm not mistaken, but they did the same drum pattern as the Cat Stevens, so people think it's Cat Stevens. But um, I played it all over. If you mm. listen to the original sample, the German sample I use, and you listen to my the, what I played, it sounds exactly alike. So, and, and the reason why it's called Uptown was because, like you said, I'm from the Bronx, but I got on in Harlem. So my first album, my first single was the Apollo. Mm. I, I did uh, about the Apollo Theater in Harlem. It was uh, um, showing respect to Harlem because I got on in Harlem. So 30 years later, when I put the love out, that single Uptown is about Harlem. And my daughter lives in Harlem. So I wanted to give respect to Harlem again 30 years later on the next album. So that's what, how Uptown came about. But I'm from, I was born in Brooklyn and raised in the Bronx. Mm. 